James chapter 4 commands believers to not speak evil against one another. But unfortunately, we know that that definitely happens. How do you respond if someone's spoken evil against you? This is a Truth Transforms Truth Nugget. A daily dose of truth for your daily transformation. Welcome back to another Truth Nugget. We're going to take a look at James chapter 4 verse 11 here and a few other verses about speaking evil toward one another, uh, the need for godly speech to not speak evil against our brother, and definitely to not slander. Let's take a look here. James 4, we're going to go to where I quote Charles Spurgeon on the matter as well. We'll hear what he has to say if someone has slandered you, but we need to start here because it's a, it's a clip from a sermon that I preached on James chapter 4, and I was preaching on this right here, verses 11 and 12, where it says, Do not speak evil against one another, brothers. The one who speaks the one who speaks against a brother or judges his brother speaks evil against the law and judges the law. But if you judge the law, you are not a doer of the law, but a judge. There is only one lawgiver and judge, he who is able to save and to destroy. But who are you to judge your neighbor? So if there is speaking evil against another brother in Christ, Basically, what James is saying is you're playing judge. You're the one putting yourself in the seat that God should be in. Uh, you uh, clearly are not living the perfect Christian life, and so you should not be judging others unrighteously. unrighteously. Now, there is sin, and we do call out sin, but this is speaking evil against one another. Uh, we're gonna, just going to follow the cross-references and take a look at some examples here. So we've got 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 2, verse 20 and following. Paul writing to the Corinthians, For I fear that perhaps when I come, I may find you not as I wish, and that you may find me not as you wish, that perhaps there may be quarreling, jealousy, anger, hostility, slander, gossip, conceit, and disorder. And that's the kind of speaking evil that we're seeing here. The evil of quarreling, getting into arguments about every little thing, the evil of jealousy, uh, not thinking the best of other believers, but being jealous of other believers for various things. Uh, anger, that if you're angry with your brother in your heart, if you say you fool in your heart, that you've committed murder. Hostility, slander, which is what we're getting to here in a moment. Gossip, conceit, and disorder. All some very evil things that unfortunately Christians do have behaviors of. Uh, also, we see Peter talking about this in 1 Peter chapter 2. So, put away all malice and all deceit and hypocrisy and envy and all slander. So, this is a problem Christians need to deal with. Also, later on in James, James is saying, do not grumble. Verse 9, do not grumble against one another, brothers, so that you may not be judged. Behold, the judge is standing at the door. So it's important that we not grumble. It's important that we focus on our own Christian lives. It's important that we uh, seek to live our life in the best way that we possibly can uh, be pursuing God, be dealing with our own sin, be not speaking evil of other believers, and not be grumbling as well. Uh, just generic grumbling, uh, complaining all around, and then also uh, thinking poorly of others and complaining about them. This would be dealing with all of that. It's an issue that we all need to deal with in our hearts, that's for sure. Now, what if someone has spoken evil against you, though? What if someone has slandered you? What if someone is gossiping about you? Uh, we do see in 1 Peter 3, 10, 3, 9 and 10, or just 9, do not repay evil for evil or reviling for reviling, but on the contrary, bless. For to this you were called, that you may obtain a blessing. 
And so there is a call to uh, not respond in the same way that this person has um, mistreated you. They mistreat you, but you don't respond in that same way. They slander you, but you don't respond in that same way. We do need to walk in godliness and not respond with the ill treatment that we've received. I'm going to take us now to a clip where I do quote Spurgeon on this. Let's see what Spurgeon had to say about this matter. Also, we shouldn't respond to sinful speech with sinful speech, as tempting as it is. Uh, don't repay evil with evil. Don't repart respond to harshness with harshness. Don't respond to insult with insult. And even if, if someone was slandered, I, I think what this shows us is we should be slow to respond. We should be slow to defend. I love Charles Spurgeon's quote on this, which um, it seems very helpful re for responding to slander. slander. He says, A great lie, if unnoticed, is like a big fish out of water. It dashes and plunges and beats itself to death in a short time. Uh, we need to trust God. We need to trust for the truth to come out uh, with God. We need to be slow to respond even uh, to something like slander. Yeah, we definitely need to be slow to respond, and we need to trust God on the matter. Uh, this doesn't mean that we shouldn't defend ourselves, but it does mean we should slow down. We should pray. We should ask for wisdom. God uh, says that he will pour out wisdom in abundance when we ask him. Uh, we know that we're called to love our enemies. We know uh, that we are not called to respond with evil, to respond with ill treatment, to respond insult for insult. Uh, no, we, we're called to walk in Christ-likeness. We're called to the higher walk. And so there are times when there may definitely need to be a defense that is made. There need, may need to be uh, there, there could be lies that are spread that could affect uh, a job. It could affect um, a ministry in the church. It could affect uh, a family situation. There are a number of things where the, it, there may be a need to make a defense, but we should be slow to respond. Uh, certainly, there is setting the record straight, but there's um, we just need to make sure we're not responding evil for evil. That would be the main point here. And so... Uh, if we just, if you continue to, to, uh, pray and trust God, he might just work that situation out without having to have any kind of defense. And there certainly would be a time for defense, but this is not a, uh, cut and dry situation. This is something that should be moved forward with, with much prayer. Well, I do hope that Today's Truth Nugget was a blessing for you. Be sure to hit that like button if you appreciated this. And uh, if you're new here, hit subscribe. These are each and every day, Monday through Friday. God bless you, and I will see you in next week's Truth Nugget. Truth Nuggets are a ministry of preaching for God's glory. To find out more about other resources available and ways that you can support the ministry, be sure to visit preachingforgodsglory.org.